And so the last question that I have comes from a gentleman who's asking just that. He basically said, Doc, you said if we use don't use it, we will lose it. Well, we didn't lose, use it. And guess what, Doc? We lost it. Can you spend some time um, talking to us about what can be done uh, to help? And he basically said he doesn't have a sex, li- sex drive. His wife doesn't have a sex drive. And what can we do in the meantime for that? So I think when it comes down to um, sex drive for both men and women, one thing that I want to be very clear about, when lubrication and, and um, engorgement has to take place, there's got to be nitric oxide there. Now, women lose nitric oxide building capacity a little later than guys. You know, the, the, we start to lose our capacity, uh, you know, probably when we hit menopause, as a matter of fact, whereas guys really start to lose their nitric oxide producing capacity a little sooner. So when we look at the sexual response cycle of both men and women, it really starts with nitric oxide. So both of you need to support your nitric oxide. So that's why the smoothie recipe book works for men and women. That's why the nitric oxide supplements um, that are designed to use nitrates to boost nitric oxide production, that's why they work for both men and women. Now, the other part of it that you have to keep in mind is that sex is a commodity exchange. You know, it always has been, you know, like we can call it what we want, but it is a commodity exchange. You know, like when you guys first got started, first started dating, you know, uh, Women, we're, we're very open to sexual conquests and exploration, and 80% of us are doing it because we, we, we want you to like us. We, we think that you might be a great catch, and we want everything that comes with it, so we're very open. As time goes by, maybe some kids, maybe we've gotten married. Well, you know, we've got you now, so we don't really have to put all that energy into sex, right? So during that space... That's ultimately where the commodity exchange part of it really becomes really important. You want sex or I want sex. What can we exchange or trade off on so that I get sex, you get sex, and you get whatever else you want? Is it, do we need to do some shopping? Do I need to take out the trash? Do we need to do some massage? Do I need to take the kids um, all day on Sunday? You know, like, what can I do to make you feel more like having sex? So that's part of it. Now, when you've gotten to the point where sex has fallen off and you just haven't been having it at all, and you just don't even know how the hell this is going to ever start back up, you've got to reconnect in the ways that you connected in the first place. So you've got to leave the D and the V or the D and the D or the V and the V out of it and really focus on, um, you know, kind of flirting, kind of reconnecting sexually. You got to bring back tongue kissing. You got to slob on each other. You got to see what each other's breath smells like. You got to rest your head on her or his neck and smell. What is what do, what do you even smell like anymore? Because I've forgotten that. You know, you guys got to start back holding hands in the car. You got to start back flirting. You want to smack her on her butt when she walks past. You want to send compliments throughout the day. You want to flirt. So start with flirting and intimacy while you're working on these other things, right? Then the next part of it is when you start to initially integrate and you're like, okay, well, we've started kissing. Maybe we should make out a little bit. <laughs> you want to do that in, in, as, 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 uh, in, in a way that basically is not going to cause anybody to be like, ah. So, right, so, so imagine we've been together for years and you haven't touched my breast in like 10 years, five years, three years hell, six months. And I'm feeling uncomfortable about them, right? So you don't want to just dive right in and start fondling the breast because you don't even know how to do that in a way that your partner is going to feel comfortable with. So everything has to be kind of slow and everything has to be in stages because you got to relearn everything. So the first day, it's just more about intimacy, making out, touching each other, feeling each other. You don't integrate in sex, sexual touching until like a week into this process. You don't integrate touching genitals until like two or three weeks into the process, right? This is slow. We're moving slow. Hell, it took us months and years to get to the point where we're not even having sex. So now let's take things slow to integrate it because what you're doing is you're just making each other comfortable with each other, right? 
And while you're doing all of this and all you, while you're doing this intimate touching, you've got to remember to breathe, right? Because one of the ways that I haven't talked about in a long time of how to boost nitric oxide production is through nasal breathing, breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth. One thing that worked when you were a kid, <laughs> all of that doesn't work when you're an adult because what you're actually doing is you're, you're, you're minimizing your ability to make nitric oxide to get a clitoral erection or a penile erection. So deep breathing, eye contact, just connecting. So in this process of trying to reintegrate sex, you also have to do some exciting things together. Things that both of you find exciting. Maybe it's the comedy club. Maybe it's going on roller coasters. Maybe it's, you know, shooting at the gun range. Maybe, you know, just something to spice things up and throw things out of the norm. Because as, as effective as routines are in raising children, routines kill relationships and they kill sex. Not, they, not that they kill relationships, but they kill sex. They kill that, that whole, because sex has to have dopamine, what fuels dopamine, the newness, the anticipation, the, the I'm looking forward to something. Not I know everything about you and I know where we're going on date night and I know what we're going to eat and I know what we're going to do on the way home and I know which way you're going to drive. Even going, driving a different way to your new spot can, can be exciting to some people because, hey, where, where are we going? Introducing new music can be exciting. So find some things that are going to excite both of you and ignite some level of curiosity about the other person. Hell, absence makes the heart go fonder. So you go on a boy's trip. She goes on a girl's trip. You guys are away from each other for some days, maybe even a week, so that you can start to think about each other in, an, in a sexual way. When, some, when you guys are living on top of each other, this is why COVID really was tough on relationships. You're living on top of each other, you're farting, you know, like the flush in the toilet, everything that you really didn't have to see before COVID, you had to see during COVID because we were just like all living on top of each other. So put some space between the two of you, make some things to the point where you're looking forward to it, give some anticipation and start to gradually reintegrate sex into the space. And so when it comes to women, the average woman and some gentlemen really like gifts, you know, like, like, like I said at the beginning, sex is a commodity exchange. So make her feel sexy, make her feel like giving you some, but if it, if you just keep on the same monotonous pace, oh, it's her birthday. I'm not really going to give her anything because she doesn't really like gifts. Bullshit. Everybody likes gifts, right? So find the sweet spot. What language speaks to your partner? Do they like gifts? Do they like for you to do things, nice things for them? What did they used to really gush about when you did? And bring that back to help bring the sexual connection back so that then you can gradually integrate in all of the other stuff. 